This is Algebra 2, Chapter 4, Section 6, in which we study the quadratic formula and the discriminant. Okay. There's one more way that we're going to use to solve quadratic equations. Remember, we've done them by graphing, we've done them by uh, factoring, we've done it by completing the square. Now we've got one more tool, and that's the quadratic formula. And it's going to look scary, but it's really not scary. All you're doing is plugging and chugging. Okay. You have to be able to follow the procedure. That's all it is. Okay. Now, when we did the graphing ones, if we don't have a calculator handy, we could be in trouble trying to find the exact values. You know, completing the square, you saw we can get some nasty numbers. Factoring, we may not be able to factor offhand. This one always works. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay. In the uh, classroom, I have a little poster that I pull out for this that has the formula written on or typed on it. So you'll have it to look at from time to time. But you'll also have it right here in front of you, too. Okay. The A, the B, and the C are just the values in the problem. Notice it's equal to zero. That makes things where you can do it. You need it equal to zero. So first and foremost, we have x squared plus 6x equals 16. We're not equal to zero. So we'll subtract the 16 over. Okay. Now, if you're not comfortable yet, please feel free to make the list of what A, B, and C are equal to. A is the number in front of the square, so A is 1. B is 6, the number in front of the plane X. And C is the constant, the negative 16. Okay. Now I'm just going to plug the numbers into the formula. Opposite of b, b is 6, so negative 6, plus or minus square root b squared, 6 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 16, all over 2 times a. Okay. Now it's arithmetic. Uh, 6 squared is 36. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times negative 16 is it ends up a positive 64. And then 2 times 1 is obviously 2. Negative 6 plus or minus the square root, when we add those together, it's 100. And we like that. We know the square root of 100 is 10. So we have negative 6 plus and minus 10 over 2. Well, negative 6 plus 10 is 4, divided by 2 is 2. Negative 6 minus 10 is negative 16, divided by 2 is negative 8. Okay. When you get nice, clean numbers like this, that means you could have factored back here. Now, for today's work, I want you to practice with this. So, yes, I know some of them you can just look at, you can see, you can factor them. But I'm trying to develop the muscle memory in your brain to how to go through this process. So, don't try to argue with me and convince me, oh, I could have just factored that. Too bad. Okay, get some practice with this while the numbers are clean. Try this one out. 2x squared plus 25x plus 33 equals 0. Try it, see how you do. So I'll make my list of A, B, and C. Plug into the formula. Do a little arithmetic, a little cleanup work. Gets me to 361. The square root of 361 is 19. Negative 25 plus 19 is negative 6 divided by 4. 
is negative 3 halves. Negative 25 minus 19 is negative 44 divided by 4 gives us negative 11. <clears throat> now, this one is another basic quadratic formula problem, but it's got something interesting that I want to show you. You notice your b is negative 6, okay? When you do your negative, your opposite b here, the opposite of negative 6 is 6. And then I want you to notice right here, this is important, a lot of your calculators, if you don't put parentheses around the negative 6 like this, when you push in negative 6 squared, it's going to lie to you. It's going to give you negative 36, which is not true. Okay, Parentheses are your friends. Use them. So we have 36 for that minus 40. 36 minus 40 is negative 4. Okay, the square root of negative 4 is 2i. Now here we can't just go 6 plus 2 is 8 because this has an i and this doesn't. But we can divide everybody by 2. So we'll divide everybody by 2. And you get 3 plus or minus i. If you want to write it 3 plus i and 3 minus i, that's okay. To me, that's extra work, but it's up to you. Now, we have one other idea we need to talk about, and that's the discriminant. The discriminant is the stuff that's under the square root, specifically b squared minus 4ac. Okay, not taking the square root of it, just that number. Okay, in the last problem, it came out to negative 4. That's, that's your discriminant. And the discriminant gives us a clue about what kind of roots we have. If the discriminant is positive and it's a perfect square, then you get two real rational roots. If you have a perfect square there, then you're not getting crazy decimals. If the discriminant is positive but it's not a perfect square, then you get two irrational real roots, or you could say real irrational roots, either way. If your discriminant works out to be zero, then it, you only have one answer because the square root of zero is zero. So that just leaves you with one solution. And as we saw in the last problem, when the discriminant is negative, you get two complex roots. So they're going to give you a few questions here where your job is to find the value of the discriminant and then describe the roots. So we're going to figure out what our a, b, and c are, negative 5, 8, and negative 1. And we're just going to do b squared minus 4ac. Okay, 8 squared minus 4 times negative 5 times negative 1. And we clean up the arithmetic and we got 44. It's positive, but it's not a perfect square. So that means we have real irrational roots. And we have two of them. Okay. Take a second and try this one out. 7x squared minus 11x plus 5. And do the same thing. Find the discriminant and then describe the roots. We have our a, b, and c that we plug in. We get a value of negative 19 from the arithmetic. Since it's negative, we say we have two complex roots. Thought so. So, quadratic formula, not that bad. You just have to follow the procedure. Plugging in the values, being careful with your arithmetic. A lot of people will end up going to this method when they have a choice because it's uh, always going to work. You may not always be able to factor.
which you can always use the quadratic formula, unless the problem says otherwise. If you have questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you, and we'll see you in class.